It has been a week since the coup attempt, and for the first time, at least in front of the cameras, Turkey's president met face-to-face -face the man who he said he couldn't reach on the day of the coup, intelligence chief Hakan Fidan. President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has admitted to what he called significant intelligence failures, but he also has said the authorities are now more vigilant. There is now a state of emergency in force. And in a sign that the government is now cleaning its own backyard, arrest warrants were issued for 300 presidential guards. Clearly, not all is well. Erdogan is still facing a crisis. He did visit parliament for the first time since the failed coup. I can say that I was extremely sad to see the state of our parliament building. It's not possible for those who took part in this attempt to be sons of this nation. They are nothing but terrorists disguised as soldiers. If the West truly claim that they believe in democracy, they should stop condemning us indirectly. It is my hope that after seeing the damage here, they will stop calling a president a dictator when he has been elected by the people by popular vote. Parliament was not the only symbol of the state that was targeted. The police, just like the army, came under heavy attack. The Prime Minister visited the Golbasi Police Special Forces Department just outside the capital, Ankara. Bin Ali Yildirim repeated what other officials have been saying for days now. The threat is not over. There may be some people who would try to take advantage and stage another attempt, leading people to panic and fear. The government is warning that the threat is not over, but it has also tried to reassure everyone that the situation is under control. It is also trying to reassure them that the state of emergency will not affect their lives. There is no curfew, no martial law, no restriction on people's movements, government leaders say. Instead, the president continues to urge the public onto the streets and sanction them to protect democracy. They drove tanks over you. They flew planes at you. They flew helicopters at you. But the power of the people was stronger. You stopped all of them. Your march must continue until we make the final announcement. In the hours during and after the coup, the people from across the political divide did come together. But the opposition is now concerned about the mobilization of government supporters. Our people pulled out from the streets after the first day. We didn't like what we were seeing. Some of the protesters were radicals, and there were similar scenes like in Egypt. People who considered themselves secular couldn't find themselves among the crowd in the streets. Opposition groups are now calling for pro-democracy rallies of their own over the weekend. The ruling party has said it will join Sunday's gathering in Istanbul's Taksim Square. That is when Turkey's post-coup unity will be tested. Zenehudur Al Jazeera, Ankara.